Good morning. Uh, I'm Foxhall Parker with the Center for Capital Markets Competitiveness here at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I will be moderating our next panel entitled Basel III's Effect on Main Street Lending. Uh, joining me are Tom Dees with the Association of Corporate Treasurers, uh, Ken Fears with the National Association of Realtors, and Tom Hunt with the Association for Financial Professionals. Uh, welcome, gentlemen, and thank you for joining us, and thanks for your flexibility. Uh, Tom Dees, I want to start with you. Um, Basel III Endgame is designed to only affect the largest U.S. banks, but what are the potential outcomes for your members when regulators impose uh, extra costs on your financial counterparties? Thanks, Fox. That, that's, a, that's a very important point. I mean, it is certainly true that these regulations apply directly uh, to financial institutions and indeed large uh, financial institutions, but believe me, they flow to uh, U.S.-based multinationals, which is where my background is, but Main Street companies also all across the country. As, as borrowers and end users, we rely extensively on the financial markets to conduct our day-to-day -day operations. Uh, every day, treasurers across the country uh, collect cash from our customers, and we concentrate it through the banking network so that we can in turn pay our suppliers, employees, lenders, and shareholders. And since these inflows and outflows rarely balance on a given day, we either borrow to meet the shortfall or invest any excess cash. And we do this all with our financial institution counterparties who are the, uh, where we get access to the financial markets through them. And additionally, to insulate our businesses from, from business uh, risk fluctuations in, in the market, we use derivatives with financial institution derivative counterparties uh, to hedge costs for such things as commodities, energy costs, foreign exchange, and uh, interest rate risk. When the regulators impose these extra costs on our financial uh, counterparties, these costs are inevitably passed on to us. And in turn, we have to pass those costs on to our customers or achieve offsetting efficiencies with our suppliers or employees. Certainly the, the extra capital burdens the regulators are set to impose will ultimately be borne by those of us in the real economy. We'll be having to perhaps forego uh, growing sales since financing those higher inventories to support that growth will uh, be more expensive. Tightening pay and scaling back hiring new employees since uh, uh, that growth will, financing that will be more expensive. And in our manufacturing plants, if we're incurring costs in one country, but we have customers uh, in another uh, country using another currency, we have to hedge that in the foreign exchange markets and that will be more expensive. So uh, the same is, is true for raw material input costs with commodity swaps and energy swaps. Uh, any expansion of plant and equipment will be have to be stretched out because the costs of recovering that loan will, will be higher. Uh, and so it puts the project at greater risk and could ultimately restrain that investment. So from a Main Street company's point of view, the financial markets are just like any other supply chain we have. And costs on those uh, supply chains, and, and this one in particular, uh, will adversely affect us and will have to be passed on. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, you know, I want to move to Ken Fears now. Ken, um, our white paper endgame uh, for Main Street lending highlights a number of potential harms uh, to residential and commercial, the residential and commercial real estate market. Uh, what effect do you see Basel III having uh, on low and medium income home buyers? Well, thanks, Fox, and thanks to the chamber for holding this very important discussion and bringing the realtors into the fold. Uh, so yeah, as you noted, the impact could be significant for low and moderate income borrowers as well as first-time home buyers. Uh, Basel Endgame introduces uh, new and increased capital charges for higher LTV uh, mortgages, essentially borrowers with lower down payments 
uh, and that's going to make it more expensive for banks to do this business. And they're either going to pass that on to consumers or they're going to pull back. Now, at the same time, uh, the regulators pulled back from providing private mortgage insurance as an offset to the capital requirements. And so that was a very important offset as it introduced efficiency for banks, but it also reduced costs and increased access for consumers. So they pulled back on that. And very similarly, they pulled back or, or, or have not given credit for reinsurance or credit risk transfer, both of which are used extensively in the conventional conforming markets at the GSCs. The, mark, the, the impacts are actually much broader than just entry level borrowers and first time home buyers. Uh, as the industry has become more dominated by uh, independent, uh, independent mortgage banks uh, in recent years, uh, who rely on large and uh, large commercial banks for their warehouse lines of credit, as well as demand for their mortgage servicing rights. And as uh, uh, Basel Endgame introduces new higher risk weights for both of those, it's, it's going to be less demand for mortgage servicing rights, uh, uh, more volatile access to capital for these independent mortgage banks, and it could have a, a, a very broad impact on our industry. That's great. Thank you, Ken. And I uh, want to reference back to the white paper. Our white paper has a great uh, section in there about warehouse lines of credit. So thanks for highlighting that. Uh, Tom Hunt, um, what are the implications of Basel III on access and pricing of credit for your members and their customers? Sure. <clears throat> thanks, Fox. And thanks for having the AFP here today. Much appreciated. Um, so really, we need a very safe and secure financial system to run the business operations for a company. <clears throat> the end game proposal seeks to make changes directly and indirectly in the pricing and access of credit to our members. Market access, client credit risk, and counterparty risk will all be reevaluated re under this proposal and most Main Street borrowers costing them more money in the end. This will likely impact jobs they might be able to create, as Tom Dees mentioned earlier. There will be a bifurcation of access to credit as banks will look to shutter those customers that are not deemed profitable under new risk weighting calculations. Half of our members are from the private sector. These companies are highly dependent on bank financing as their main means of access to fund working capital, such as payroll, and many of their large capital projects. They are at a disadvantage with this proposal versus publicly held companies, costing them more for credit in the long run. Examples of bank products that will become more expensive as a response to the operational risk assessment as part of Basel III Endgame, as there is always a credit component to every one of these products that the bank must have to analyze. For example, standard lines of credit to fund working capital will be more expensive. Syndicated loans, committed and uncommitted lines, will be reweighted differently. Uh, debt and access to capital markets, term loans, leveraged companies are at more of a disadvantage under this proposal. Access to payment rails, such as FedNow, RTP, CHIPS, ACH, Fedwire, FedACH, and outsourced solutions for payments for banks will be more expensive for our members. Escrow and custody services, foreign exchange services, leasing, merchant acceptance or credit cards. These new capital constraints limit the ability to lend and puts the U.S. Main Street borrowers at a much bigger disadvantage than their global competitors. Thanks, Tom. Um, Tom Dees, I want to circle back to you. I think Congressman Barr mentioned uh, rising inflation. Um, you know, for the better part of two years, the Fed has been working to bring down inflation. Uh, what influence could the rule have on the Fed's goal to curb inflation? Yes, Fox. Well, you know, I mentioned uh, earlier uh, how we would have to reduce costs uh, in order to meet this, but there are other offsets. And unfortunately, uh, one of the biggest is to raise prices uh, to pass those costs along. And, and that would be a, a chain reaction throughout the economy as we raise prices and then our customers in turn uh, raise their prices and it, and it ripples through. You know, the uh, amazing thing is that uh, my association, uh, uh, Tom Hunt's association, and others worked extensively with the U.S. Chamber uh, in connection with regulations for the Dodd-Frank Act that was passed after, of course, the uh, the 2008 
uh, financial crisis. Uh, and uh, we got a bipartisan consensus that end users, non-financial end users should be exempted from having to post their capital directly to margin and centrally clear their derivative trades. Uh, for all the reasons that we've been discussing here today and that uh, um, the, the Congressman mentioned. And so fast forward to this proposal and Despite this bipartisan consensus we reached uh, in 2015-2016, uh, 2016, they've come back with uh, an indirect uh, posting of capital by us and that our banks are going to have to do it and we're going to have to pay our banks for that. So uh, it's a regression really from uh, where we've been and the importance that we've uh, try to recognize for end users and Main Street companies across the company to be conservative in their in their use of capital, Fox. That's great. Um, thank you. Uh, Ken Fears, um, talk a little bit about the current state of the housing market and, uh, and how Basel III uh, will shape the market moving forward. Yeah, great question, Fox. So uh, as most people are aware, mortgage rates spiked by nearly uh, by tripling over the last two years. Layer onto that a housing shortage of somewhere between uh, 4.5 and 6.5 million units. And that means affordability is going to be strained for years to come. At the same time, uh, in a rising rate environment, uh, that means more vol volatility uh, for access as, as rates weigh on banks balance sheets and that, that ability to manage both rate and credit risk. So that makes it uh, very difficult. And then at the, the administration also has the same, uh, at the same time has the goal of narrowing the homeownership gap. And this is something that NAR shares and is, is active uh, in the black homeownership collaborative and trying to narrow that, that spread as well. The problem is that a lot of these changes will add to these problems. Uh, so under Basel and Game, it'll raise costs, reduce access. Uh, it'll make it more difficult for banks, in particular IMBs, to manage their their, their rate risks uh, because of uh, potentially narrower credit lines and, and uh, less demand for MSRs. And at the same time, it'll be, make it harder for banks to operationalize programs like the Community Re Reinvestment Act and, and special purpose pro uh, credit programs that are aimed at narrowing the racial homeownership gap. So we're we're very concerned about all these uh, changes that are going to be thrown onto the backs of home buyers uh, and what it means for homeownership in the long term. Thank you. Um, our, you know, it, as mentioned by Tom Dees here, and um, you know, our white paper provides some salient examples of how the rule would impact uh, derivatives markets. Um, uh, Tom Hunt, can you talk about the challenges end users might encounter should the cost and complexity uh, of hedging their non-financial business risk increase? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And really, what we're talking about here is the foreign exchange industry. Um, that industry sees over seven and a half million dollars traded daily. Access to this large market would likely become strained for many uh, Main Street companies under this proposal, especially the privately held companies when their banks are reassessing their risk profile with these different risk weightings. For example, currency hedging, GSIPs provide this service to their clients with stricter capital requirements, likely affecting availability and cost to manage those currency risks effectively. Training behavior changes. Uh, GSIBs will likely alter the risk management uh, uh, practices in response to capital surcharges affecting availability and price volatility. GSIBs also provide access to non deliverable forward markets in countries the US depends on for trading volumes, such as China, India, and Philippines. This may impact their ability to provide liquidity in NDFs, raising prices and volatility. An unintended consequence would be seeking alternative sources for GSIB foreign exchange services going to third parties. Uh, Cross-border transactions. There is a credit component to providing these services and capital surcharges will, will likely impact the cost and availability of financing for these services. And last, the GSIBs provide access to the foreign exchange market and being market makers. Margins will become thinner, more expensive, and cost Main Street lenders 
as a risk profile might be deemed less despite no changes in their business operations, raising costs and costing companies more. Thanks. Uh, Tom, do you any, I know you mentioned that in um, some of your remarks, anything to add uh, on derivatives markets? No, I, I, um, I think that uh, I just want to emphasize what everyone's been saying, which is that, you know, our system here in the real economy is very integrated with financial uh, markets. Uh, to Tom Hunt's point about derivatives, uh, the, these GSIBs that are being directly affected by these rules are the market makers in derivatives. Uh, foreign exchange trading, uh, euro, dollar, foreign exchange swaps, uh, for instance, are all run by the GSIBs. And they, in turn, make a market with Main Street banks who uh, provide those hedging services to their Main Street customers. So uh, it's important to note that when you push on one end of the balloon, it inevitably comes out the other. And although these regulators are just pushing supposedly on these largest banks, it, it ripples through the entire real economy that we have to operate in. Well, I think that's a great place to leave it um, and something that we should all be thinking about. Um, Tom Dees, Ken Fears, Tom Hunt, uh, thank you all so much for taking the time to do this, for your flexibility. Um, and uh, with that, I will pass it on to my colleague, Bill Hulse, uh, for a conversation with Governor Bowman.